Section 1.62, we're going to do a couple more examples for the limit of sequences. First, let's look at this super ex easy example here. You have a fraction. The top one is a polynomial, and the bottom one is a polynomial. You notice that the highest power is the same. Now, in that case, then the limit is simply their coefficients. You do not care about all this. You know, all this is not important because these dominate. So then you have so the answer to this. The limit as it approaches is simply the coefficient of each term, which is 2 over 1 equals to 2. And that is your answer. Now, the next question we look at is more difficult. And you have a to the power n as n goes to infinity, and that we must prove that it's 0 as long as a is between 0 and 1. You also know, notice that if a is just 1, then you'll stay at 1. If a is 0, it will stay at 0. It's not going anywhere. So it's be, but between 0 and 1, even if a is just a tiny little bit less than 1, it will eventually eat itself down into 0. Because each time it multiplies by itself, it loses a little bit. The proof, however, we're not going to argue that way. And actually, we're going to pull a trick. In sequences, it's very common to have to pull tricks out of the bag in order to prove some kind of a sequence convergence. And the only way to really learn these tricks is just by reading about them and memorizing each trick. So here's this problem. We're going to use two tricks. The first one we're going to do is to set a equal to 1 over 1 plus h, where h is bigger than 0. The reason is because a is between 0 and 1. So 1 plus h, when h is, you adjust h to be small enough so that this equation will take place. In fact, given that being the a as a given value, h can simply be solved like this. h equal to um, 1 over a minus 1. That's how you would do it. And because a is uh, a is less than 1, so 1 over a is bigger than 1, so this value will always be positive, as we have asserted. Now, how are we going to use this? Once we have this, here is uh, we're going to do this. So a to the power n, based on this relationship then, a to the power negative n, notice I said negative, is simply equal to this, this thing right here, 1 plus h to the power n, because I chose a negative sign there. So this becomes a positive value. And what is this? This, based on the earlier problem that we've done, is bigger than or equal to 1 plus nh. That's a very convenient relationship to memorize, because it takes the coefficient down to a more manageable level. So if this is true, then, then things are do, looking pretty good, because then we say a to the power n, then when we flip the fraction over, the inequality sign changes. It's 1 over 1 plus nh. And we need this thing to be less than epsilon. So we'll set this thing to be less than epsilon, which means, which is quite easy to do. And then we can isolate to see where n is, which means we will choose the big N, big N such that um, this relationship happens. Choose big N such that um, we'll flip it around. So it has 1 plus big N times H is bigger than uh, 1 over epsilon, okay? because we're flipping it around. Or N times H is bigger than 1 over epsilon minus 1. So as long as this relationship stands, then a to, a to the power n is going to be less than epsilon. And therefore, our proof is complete.